Welcome back, Sports Tonight, on your award-winning sports-loving channels television. Let's continue our countdown to the 2019 FIFA Women's World Cup. 25. It's now 25 more days to go, guys. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not under any form of tension. I believe in the Super Falcons. And you see, some of the players that are prosecuting the Women's Waffle Cup, they are already telling the world what they should expect when the World Cup commences in France. The Super Falcons of Nigeria, uh, they will go there and actually let people know why they are the undisputed champions of Africa. 25 more days to go. And today, uh, Coach Thomas Denaby, that Super Falcons coach, are listed 27 players for the final camp in Austria, ahead of the FIFA, on the, on the ahead of the FIFA Women's World Cup that will take place in France from June the seventh to July the seventh. The players include Onomebi, Ngozi Okobi, Desire Okara Nozier, Asisa Toshola, and Francisca Odega. Those names you know them. Denabi has also picked Uche Nakano. She's on fire right there at the Women's Waffle Cup, as well as home-based professionals Amarachi Okoronko. Evelyn Wabuoku, Chidima Okeke, and Chiamaka Nadozie. Nigeria's final list of 23 players. That means four will leave the final camp uh, because it's 23 players that will go to the World Cup. Uh, we emerge, that 23 players will emerge from this group of 27 towards the end of the two week campaign in Austria. The African champions will, will leave for Austria on May the 20th. For their vital results. Same place that the Super Eagles camped while they, while they were getting ready for the World Cup. So the NFF, yes, they're beginning to talk and keep their words, their action this time around. And we love it so much. So let's see uh, if the Super Four comes. We say thank you to them for uh, showing them the same sort of love that they have given to the, their male counterparts, the Super Eagles. One of the names in that list that I didn't read is Inia Basi Umotong. She plays for Brighton Hove Albion uh, in the United Kingdom. The league has ended, so Inia is chilling. Let's go to Brighton and talk to Inia Basi Umotong in our club and country football segment. Inia Basi, good evening. Welcome to Sports Tonight. Hi, good evening, Nastian. Uh, very nice to be here. Yeah, good to have you on the show. Let, maybe I should start by saying Abadie. <laughs> oh, that's it. That's a home girl right there. Uh, good to have you on the show. Uh, and Ini, congratulations. You bagged the first class degree in economics. Look, it's beautiful because this is what we're talking about. But do you want to tell me how you did it playing professional football and getting a first class degree? Um, I couldn't have done it without God, honestly, and just the hard work that went into um, combining and juggling both of those. Um, I had to become very good at managing my time. Um, I think what, it worked hand in hand because football became like a release, um, a good way to get away when, when my studies became too intense. So I could go to training and, you know, just completely exert all my energy and get all the stress and then... I was, I was better in a better position to go back and start studying again. So I think they worked really hard. Mm, and it wasn't just that you got a first-class degree. You also got the Dean Award. You were outstanding. Awesome. Please, accept our congratulations once again. So, so let's talk about club football now before we get into country. Uh, how was it for you and Brighton this season? Uh, it's been great. Um, this is uh, for Brighton. This is the uh, first season we've been in um, the Super League, which is the top flight in England. Um, it's a really competitive league, and it's been great. I think we've set in well to the league. Um, we've come against up against tough opponents, but um, I mean, our target at the beginning of the season, coming into the new league, was um, to stay in the league, and you know, we've exceeded that expectation. So it's been a very good season for us. Mm. Uh, uh, is there any way the team would have been better? Ninth on the on the log? So what was that question? Is there any way the team could have been better after finishing ninth oh. on the log? 
Yeah, definitely. There was, um, especially towards the, the first half of the season, there was a lot of really frustrating um, nil-nil games that we should have won and um, one-nil, ga- one-nil games that we lost. Um, so it was really frustrating towards the beginning of the season because, like I said, we are new to the league and we were finding our feet a little bit. Um, but yeah, we should have definitely picked up more points. Um, but it's lessons learned that we can take into the next season, um, 2019-2020 season. Mm, awesome. I'll come back to Brighton, but let's let's talk national team football now. Uh, you made your debut for the Super Falcons in 2015. Congratulations once again. You received call-up to go to the final camping phase before the World Cup. What are your expectations for the World Cup in the Abbasi? Oh, I feel I, I'm very, very optimistic about this Cup for the Super Falcons. Um, in my opinion, uh, we have the strongest squad um, since I started playing for um, the Super Falcons and um, the preparation as well that's gone into this World Cup has been has been outstanding. Um, um, like I said, like we've had um, Four Nations tournament in China, we've had a uh, um, Cyprus Cup, we've had um, we played Canada and a couple of teams in Alicante. So by far the best preparation um, we could we could have asked for going into the World Cup. So I believe that uh, the Super Falcons will have their best World Cup. I believe so too. That's why I've been telling everyone that cares to listen. But are you girls under any form of pressure? Um, yeah, I mean, there's always pressure because, you know, it's the, um, it's the first team, it's the national team. But I think the, pref- the pressure is the privilege and it just shows, you know, the, um, the high hopes that, you know, our fans and our nation have behind us, you know, so we'll do anything, everything to make them proud. So I believe this pressure is here, yes, but um, but we were using it as a privilege to go and do our best to make make everyone back home proud. The Super Falcons would go against France, Norway, and Korea Republic. France and Norway, top European teams. And, and each time I talk to somebody here, uh, Austin is going to be difficult. You're a professional. When you see such draw, what comes to mind? Um, it just... It just it's a very it's a tough draw, but um, like it's the World Cup, so it wasn't it was to be expected, and you know, and that's what we're preparing for. Every game that we play, um, we are preparing to to face these tough tough opponents, and um, it doesn't surprise me that you know we've been put in a in a hard group because that is the nature of um, the tournament. It's the highest platform um, in the women's game, and so with this with this tough group, it's a privilege. You know, it, it allows us to go and showcase you know how far we've come. And, you know, talent that we have within the team. Mm, beautiful. Uh, you've been involved in all three World Cup, um, pre-World Cup preparation. Uh, you were in China, you were at Cyprus. Uh, what has the experience been like with the team? Oh, it's great. Um, I love meeting up with, um, with the squad. Um, we work hard, we push each other to get the best out of each other. Um, it's, it's so family orientated as well. One, it, the, the vibe and the energy in camp is always so beautiful and so great to be a part of. And each camp that we go to, we're getting better and better. You can see that, you know, we're taking away into our, into our clubs um, what we've learned um, at camp with um, Coach Thomas and Jürgen. And improve, we're building up to so the next time we meet, we just become stronger and we gel more and we're able to implement the things that um, they have they've been teachers in the previous camps and we're just getting better and better. That's right. Uh, Inni, what's the major strength of this current Super Falcons team? Um, as it's always been, just, I think, our attacking threat. Um, we're, we are lethal in attack and we have speed, we have strength, we have technique. So we have, we have a combination of everything to make any defender um, at any, any, any level uh, be terrified. And I think that is the strength. And that is, you know, what that's what other teams fear when they, when they think of the Super Falcons. Mm, okay. I, 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 I will hold on to that because that's really good. Um, let's go back to Brighton. Uh, are you still going to be at Brighton next season? Um, yes, I think I will be, yes. You don't want to go to Arsenal? They won the title? <laughs> Yes, they did. But um, I, I've learned so much this season with um, with Brighton under Hope Powell. Um, she was the she's the ex England manager for 15 years. So the the learning that I, experience I'm getting learning under Hope has been priceless. So I'd like to stay with her and learn uh, more at least one more season before I move on. Mm. Um, on a lighter note, Leon, Leon Balogun is at Brighton, and Brighton. 
just whiskers re escaped relegation. What's your take on Brighton, the male, the, the men's team? Um, I think they're in a bit of a similar position to the women's team. As in this season, I think their uh, expectation was to probably stay in the league and do it go as far as possible. Um, I was speaking to Leon um, last week, actually. I see him around the training ground quite often. But um, he was just saying, I was saying congratulations to obviously securing um, Premier League title next season. But um, I feel like they're, they're happy that they've stayed in the season. But I think they are a little bit disappointed that they couldn't climb the table, um, I think. Um, the expectations were that they'll do better than they did last season. Um, last season they finished 13th, I think it was. Um, but yeah, this season was a close call for them, I believe. But I think we're all just so happy that you know they managed to stay in the Premier League for another season. I know, and what a crazy season we had in Yabasi. Manchester City, uh, look, I've been trying to understand what happened this season. Can you explain what happened this season? <laughs> oh, it's crazy. What a crazy season in every single tournament, in the Europa League, in um, the Champions League. It's just been a crazy, crazy season for football in general. Um, and you have to see, I was at the game, Manchester, Brighton game um, yesterday, and to say to see Manchester win, this, win the league. Um, it was actually a really close call with Liverpool because I have to feel for Liverpool. They've they've done all they can. They finished with 97 points, um, only one loss of the season. Um, they had PFA Player of the Year in their team, so wow. they've that, they've done so well. But it still wasn't enough, and it just it just shows you know the standard of the game just keeps on rising and rising, and you have to be at the best always. I know, and you must just feel for that Liverpool team. You, you, the question will be, what else should they do? What, what should a team do? After gathering 97 points, you cannot win the league. It's really, really tough for uh, Jürgen Klopp and his team. Uh, in, in, before I let you go, what words do you have for young girls who want to play professional football and still do well in school? Oh, it's definitely possible. Um, I recommend it to all, all, all young players who want to become a, um, a professional football player because like any like football, um, the career is a short career, you know, by the time you're 35, your, your career ended. So you need to have something to fall back on um, and education is key. Um, it's definitely possible if you're able to manage your time well, work hard, and there's no reason why you can't achieve both and do well and excel in both areas. So mm. just keep on working. Oh, that's my advice, yeah. yeah, that's beautiful. Uh, one more for the road. In your, uh, in your basket, tell, tell me, what is it that you've seen with women's football in England that we can follow in Nigeria? Because we've got the talent, but we're not just at the same level. Yeah. Um, I believe the main area which I, uh, which I think will help the Nigerian League grow is, is investment in the form of sponsorship. Uh, for example, Barclays Bank, um, they're the main sponsorship of the Men's Premier League, the Barclays Premier League. They've just announced that they'll be sponsoring the Women's Super League from next season. Wow. So, uh, yeah, so I think that is going to drive, the sponsorship is going to drive, um, is going to drive the game, women's game and improve it. Um, yeah, that is the main form, I think, that mm. the Nigerian League can, um, can replicate from England. Idi, I must say thank you so much for your time. All the best as you go to Austria, and hopefully when you go to the World Cup, rep us properly. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. Nice talking to you, Austin. Take Thank care. you. Thank you. So that's it. Super Falcons and Brighton player in the Abbasi Umotong are speaking to us all the way from her base in Brighton. And, and what a season. She, she was also trying to understand uh, what happened to Liverpool. She was at that final game where, Bright, when, where Manchester City defeated Brighton to win the league title. And so she's optimistic also with the Super Falcons, and um, she believes that they can go to the World Cup and do their thing. In, in, in Abbasu, Motong also holds a first-class degree in economics. First class from the University of Southampton. And she was speaking to young girls there that, look, you can do it. Because it's a time you won't kick football anymore. Your brain comes to play. So... Uh, Football and education is very possible. That's your model right there, in case you're thinking that it cannot be done. And that's what we are doing with the Channels Kids Cup. Let them know now. That's the foundation, primary school. Let them know that you can be growing, doing well in school, and also playing football. And if we can expose them, 
and teach them the right things and keep games masters and parents and other role models around them to encourage them, they can actually become superstars. Because when you mix food, sports, and education, you're not just having a star. You're having a super, super, super star. Yes, that's what you're having. I love that story right there from uh, Amy. And then we just hope that she continues to inspire young girls all over the world.